I'm Andrew Henderson. Um, I'm active with Minnesota Cop Block. I am active with Communities United Against Police Brutality to shine the public light on police misdeeds. I'll, I'll never stop doing this. I'll never stop having this interest. I got involved with these ideas uh, when I lived in the north end of St. Paul. Um, I saw an ins incident of police brutality outside my home where a, a gentleman was pepper sprayed uh, in the face and then kicked in the chest by the police. Um, and as he was being put in the patrol car, they emptied a can of pepper spray into his ear. Um, at this point, I, I, uh, I saw that, that filming the police was an effective tactic and uh, started doing that in my own community. Um, at first, uh, very covertly from my, my bedroom window, taking pictures and filming uh, police incidences. And then uh, gradually moved up to, to, to getting out there on the street with a camera in my hand. And you never know when, it, when, when something's going to happen. So I pretty much carry a camera wherever I go. I definitely think that it's, it's a necessity in, in today's world. If you think back to the, you know, the, the Rodney King video, to have a video camera at that time, you had to have a lot of money. You know, they were expensive, they were big, um, people couldn't carry them around, and, and, and now we all do. So I think that's why people are feeling the need more and more is because they're seeing all these videos with, with, with all this egregious behavior from, 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 from law enforcement personnel and, and realizing that, yes, they need to film. They, they need to document their, their, their interactions and the interactions of others. Um, not, you know, not only keep them their self safe, but to keep their community safe. When I first got involved, um, I reached out to Minnesota Cop Block, and uh, they were happy to, you know, to work with me. Um, at this time, I was actually going through trial for, for, uh, for filming police. Um, so there was, a, there was, there was, you know, that interest out there. Um, I also became involved with uh, Communities United Against Police Brutality which is a great Minneapolis organization. Um, I've since become their cop watch coordinator and I teach a lot of uh, cop watch trainings to various communities through them. Um, and it's a great experience, great organization to become involved with. If you live in the, the Twin Cities area, I definitely suggest you check them out. Uh, they have meetings every Saturday at 1.30 at uh, 4200 Cedar Avenue in South Minneapolis. I want to educate others on how to do this, you know, so that this this, this, this idea will continue long after I'm gone. If you'd like a Know Your Rights training or a Cop Watch training, uh, you can get a hold of me through my website or at thedrukes at gmail.com. Um, all my trainings are free. I, I don't charge for the information at all. I, I, I can train small groups, large groups, um, anything from a community organization to a church group. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, a lot of court support where I, where I go to court with people, um, walk them through legal land, you know, help them get a, a public defender, you know, be there for moral support. Recently I bought a former squad car, uh, black and white, and uh, I have the back covered in stickers uh, for people, you know, to, to look up things like, like copwalk.org, um, jury nullification sticker, antiwar.com, um, uh, I think I have a We Cop Watch sticker on there, a cell 411 sticker. I use this as, 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 as primarily an outreach vehicle. Um, I, I have the center console filled with, with different flyers for things like jury nullification, don't take the plea, uh, know your rights. When I'm, I, I, I see someone and they, they ask about the car, I can, I can load them up with information. The more you can expand your mind with different ideas, I think the, the, the more effective your tactics get and the, and, and the more easy they become to you. Um, to, to, to uh, you know, adapt new tactics um, on the spot. So I, I, I say educate yourself as much knowledge as you can. My most influential, of course, is copwalk.org. Uh, um, I, I spent hours on that website when I was, you know, just getting started out. Um, watched as many videos as I could, um, you know, uh, photography is not a crime, we cop watch. Um, those are the main ones that influenced me. Um, different podcast series are great too. Uh, such as Ben Stone's Beyond Civil Disobedience series. Um, that is probably one of my most influential podcasts I've ever heard. Freedom Fiends is another great, great, uh, great resource. Um, good podcast, lots of information, varying topics. Anything on, on, on Free Talk Live is great. Um, and I think that mainstream media gets most of their ideas from these, you know, from these sites like Coplock or, or Photography's Not a Crime. 
uh, a free thought project, stuff like that, and and pick up on it that way. I see the growth of police accountability moving at an exponential rate right now. I really do, and it's 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 amazing. I can remember, you know, five years ago when I started, you know filming police and, and having an interest in this, it was a very taboo subject. Nobody wanted to discuss it. Um, you know, people thought you just hated cops, um, and people generally did not understand it. Uh, and, and today, everybody's doing it. Everybody knows about it. Everybody has an interest in it. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy to see that. The first time that you go filming, it's, it's, it's going to be scary. It's going to be hard. Um, I remember looking at, back at my first video, my hand was shaking, you know, it was, it was with my cell phone and, and the entire video was just shaking because I was, I was, I was that nervous, I, I had that much adrenaline rushing through me, um, you know, filming police, it's, it's, it's not something most people do every day, so it can be a little intimidating for most and scary, um, but I promise it gets easier. It, um, every time you do it, it'll get easier and easier and it'll become more of a, a, a normalcy, you'll, you'll just know what to do. You, you, you won't be scared. You'll just, you'll be there for the community. You'll be there for, for, for the person, you know, getting accosted by, by a, you know, man in a costume with a badge. Um, and, and you will create change. You will, you will make that incident better by just being there with that camera, you know, having that independent witness going on. There's a lot of tactics today that I wish I would have used four years ago when I had my camera taken away. Um, I wish I would have used Bamboozer. I wish I would have live streamed that uh, that that interaction, um, and and had a copy of, of the footage saved on a, on on a you know different server. Um, I wish I would have had cell four one one. I wish that you know someone could have came to my aid right then. Um, I I use cell four one one all the time now. I attended a uh, Citizens Academy through the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. This was about five years ago. This was just before um, one of their their employees took away my camera, and I went through a, a eighteen month court process, um, you know, fighting charges uh, levied against me um, for for simply filming, you know, police activity. Um, and I went to the Citizens, Citizens Academy class, and a couple classes in, I asked a a question that was that was pretty hard for them, or a couple questions that were that were pretty hard for them to answer. And I got a letter from them in the mail a few days later, uh, saying that I was no longer welcome on the property, uh, and I was I couldn't go to their citizens academy class anymore. Um, so I mean that 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 shows me the level of transparency that that uh, that police departments really have. You know, um, you you can try to go to one, but if you ask any real questions, they either won't be able to answer them or they'll kick you out. You know, I I, I worry about police officers today. I, I worry about their future moral injury. And if a police officer is watching this, think about how you're gonna feel at the end of life. When, when you're on your deathbed and you're thinking about these horrible things that you did to people, these, these, these unnatural things, just because you were told to do so, just because it was your job, how are you gonna feel? Are, are, are you gonna be okay with this? Or are, are you gonna have this 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 remorse. Explore your conscience. Um, think is, is is what you're doing right or is it just to earn that paycheck? I mean, you know, not every law is righteous. Um, legislation is not a substitute for morality at all. Um, you know, I mean, locking someone in a cage you know, or, or, or making them pay you money for, for possessing a plant is, is just plain wrong. Um, and my motivation is to help people understand that. I, I, I want people to, to take control of their own lives, to, to own themselves rather than, you know, be subjected to bad legislation under horrible rule. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hoping to, to, to move people's mindsets towards, you know, that, that ultimate goal of, of personal liberty.